Hello team, how's it going? Hope you're all well. Make sure you click that subscription button, give us a thumbs up. But today we're going to be talking about tier one, tier two in the US military. Let's get into it. All of you have heard about tiers in US Special Operations Forces. We have already put the focus on tier 1 meaning and the teams included in it, but what about tier 2? The tier system was designed by Joint Special Operations Command, tier 2 units are still highly elite. However, there is no question whether joining tier 2 units is easier or not. To use an example, the regular Navy SEALs, tier 2, have a dropout rate of 80 to 85% during training whereas the British Special Air Service, SAS, has a dropout rate of 90 to 95 percent, and more importantly only people with three years of military service prior are allowed to apply, thus the caliber of applicants is already more elite. I don't think the dropout rate would be a consideration um, so much into why one's tier one or tier two in my personal opinion, but then what do I know I'm not an operator? Tier 2 U.S. Spec Ops units are the following units. U.S. Navy SEALs. Yeah, so a lot of people don't know the U.S. Navy SEALs are only Tier 2. The U.S. Marine Corps Forces Special Operations Command, MARSOC, is the Marine's contribution to special operations on today's battlefield. Also known as Marine Raiders, they are capable of conducting complex direct action raids and high-level reconnaissance. Raiders are not the same as Marine Force Recon, while Force Recon is an elite unit, it does not belong to the Special Operations Command as MARSOC does. MARSOC is the most recent addition to the primary Special Operations groups, having been activated in 2006. Had very good things about them. Marine Force Recon. The mission of Force Recon is to conduct amphibious reconnaissance, deep ground reconnaissance, surveillance, battle space shaping, and limited scale raids in support of the Marine Expeditionary Force, other Marine Air Ground Task Forces, or a joint force. U.S. Marine Reconnaissance Units are tasked with providing the commander of a larger force of Marines with information about his operational area. Their missions usually focus on specific information requirements which, due to their changing or unique nature, cannot be obtained by means other than putting a man on the ground to observe and report. Recon Marines are, by nature, capable of independent action in support of the larger unit's mission. Army Ranger or 75th Ranger Regiment. Rangers lead the, way. the 75th Ranger Regiment is a lethal, agile and flexible force, capable of executing a myriad of complex, joint special operations missions in support of US policies and objectives. Designed and trained to be the most rapidly deployable unit in the Army capable of conducting operations in all types of terrain and weather using various insertion methods, today's 75th Ranger Regiment is the Army's premier raid force. The regiment is composed of light infantry forces with specialized skills that enable them to perform a variety of special operations missions, airborne, air assault, and direct action operations, raids, infiltration and exfiltration by air, land or sea in addition to airfield seizure, recovery of personnel and special equipment, and support of conventional forces. Each ranger battalion has the capability of deploying anywhere in the world with 18 hours notice. Fast. Just quick. U.S. Army Special Forces aka Green Berets. Go on then, who's better, Green Berets or Rangers? Give us your thoughts in the comment section. Tier 1 units are commanded and controlled by Joint Special Operations Command of U.S. Special Operations Command. In addition to performing highly classified activities, the special mission units are also tasked with special missions, sometimes referring to unconventional warfare, counter-terrorist activities, direct action, special reconnaissance, and black operations. There are only five acknowledged Tier 1 special mission units in the United States military, the Army's first Special Forces Operational Detachment, Delta, Delta Force. Do they even exist? Comment below. 
The Army's 75th Ranger Regiment, Regimental Reconnaissance Company. See, I didn't know they were a tier one. They have the Navy's heard of Naval Special Warfare Development Group, Dev Group. SEAL Team 6, highly elite. The Air Force's 24th Special Tactics Squadron, 24 STS. And Intelligence Support Activity, ISA. I would say they're uh, similar to the British Army's British Armed Forces SRR, Special Reconnaissance Regiment, I'm guessing. Tier 1 units are the creme de la creme of spec ops. Usually admittance into Tier 1 units is only possible after service in a Tier 2 unit. For example, Delta Force is totally comprised of members from existing Tier 2 Spec Ops units. As for DevGru, one must also be ex Spec Ops, unlike regular SEAL teams, which admittance does not require prior military service. In terms of a US example, Delta Force, which was trained by the SAS initially, has a dropout rate similar to the SAS, and all Delta members are already Tier 2 Spec Ops members. So, in short Tier 2 units require you to be in the epitome of fitness and strength, and more. Whereas Tier 1 units require the aforementioned things to a greater extent, as well as prior military service, which means an already developed military skill set. The skills set that Tier 1 applicants would have due to prior service in Tier 2 units would be impeccable marksmanship skills, explosive skills and knowledge of military strategy tactics. Once fully trained as a Tier 1 Spec Ops member, the soldier would have been trained in psychological training to resist torture or interrogation, and trained in evasion tactics, such as survival, evasion, resistance and escape training. What Tier 2 represents? Some people claim Tier status depends on funding, but this isn't true. Tier ranking really is to do with eliteness, this is why the CIA's Special Activities Center, and within that the Paramilitary Special Operations Group recruit from Tier 1 units. The Special Operations Group recruit from DevGru and Delta, not from Army Rangers or Navy SEALs. Even when the CIA uses Special Forces units for operations they still choose Tier 1 units, not Tier 2 ones. When the CIA launched the operation to capture Osama bin Laden in Abbottabad, Pakistan they didn't use a regular SEAL team, they used the development group, Dev Group. Yeah, there it is, yeah, it's hard to say, um, but my personal opinion from what I've heard, um, obviously, like I said, I'm no SF soldier, I'm no operator, but you hear the different stories, especially with Delta, you know, they're hardly spoken about, but you always hear about Navy SEALs. You don't know what jobs, um, you know, SAS, SBS, Delta Force, um, SEAL Team 6, really what they're doing. It's, it's secret, top secret. They're mostly plain clothes, wearing beards, long hair, and highly skilled. And, that failure rate is most probably higher just because you can't make any mistakes. Um, your personality's got to be spot on. As 75th Ranger Regiment or SEAL teams, they're mostly not gonna fail you for your personality or making one mistake. As when it comes to Delta Force, SEAL Team 6, SAS, SBS, you, you're not making any mistakes. You know, you, your, your personality's got to fit, your attitude has to fit. You've got to be the best at absolutely everything, but master of all the basics. So really enjoyed that. I'm looking to see, looking at, um, looking at some more stuff of this. Um, let me know what you're going to see, and I'll get watching and I'll post it for you.